all right, budgets are tight, money is tight, and you still have to get to that show. You got to get there and you got to convince your boss you got to get there. So what do you do? Uh, I've got uh, just a fantastic guest who's who's got a ton of energy, a ton of experience in in one on one talking with exhibitors about this pain, this pain specifically. So we're going to talk about how to do more with less, how to get the most out of the budget so you can have a successful show. So super happy to have on Rich Rodriguez. Rich is a trade show veteran, and uh, I'll let him tell tell you all about his experience, and then we're going to really talk about. Uh, getting the most out of that trade show dollar. Rich, welcome to Trade Show University. Really happy to have you on. Thanks, Jim. I, long time listener, first time guest. I'm excited about this. Oh, outstanding. Outstanding. Actually, you and I, I think we met on that panel discussion uh, a while yeah. back. And that's how I got to know Rich. And, and then he and I, through LinkedIn, have uh, just had great conversations. I love his content. I love his energy. And he, he brings such a great perspective. Uh, because he's talking to exhibitors every day. So he hears firsthand, <laughs> especially the budget part. So tell people a little bit about you. Um, you know, I, it, it's funny you say veteran. I feel like I've been doing this for so long, but it's uh, I've really only been at this for about a year and a half. Um, but I've always had an interest in events um, and sales, I guess. I, it, my my first sales job, uh, I handed out flyers for a bar in the south of Portugal when I was like 14 years old, um, wow. making 25 cents per person that came in. So, and I was like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm pretty good at this. Um, and then uh, events, you know, I, I, I interned for Marvel Comics and got hired right out of college by them. And I worked Comic-Con, the New York Comic-Con, never made it to San Diego hmm. um, when that was growing. So I got to work that show and kind of see how an event goes uh, full life cycle um, and watch how the event in general grew at Comic-Con in, in New York um, to kind of compete with San Diego. And so that's kind of my first taste of live events. And I've always kind of had an interest in it. Uh, and then, you know, sales job after sales job after sales job. And then I ended up here. So I, I was selling digital marketing online and it was cool. I was good at it, but I always thought, you know, it, it would be really fun to sell something tangible, right? Um, and then this has just kind of been the perfect storm for me because I'm still selling marketing, but you can literally touch it, right? Like we build these booths and we build these events and you can actually put it in your hand and well, depending on how big the booth is and, uh, <laughs> and you can experience it firsthand, right? Like you, you actually know the quality assurance and the quality controls right there in front of you. So yeah, it's just, uh, it's been a lot of fun. I get to meet a lot of colorful, interesting people in this industry. And uh, yeah, it's it's great. I'm having the time of my life doing this. That's awesome. Yeah, the industry, the people make this industry. They, uh, the passion is there. The, the They care for each other. They, they reach out, they lift each other up. Even competitors will work together, which is a really, really cool thing to see. But you're out there day to day, you're talking with exhibitors. What are you seeing out there as far as, you know, obviously, Live events have come back and they're even bigger than they were before the pandemic in a lot of ways, but, but budgets are tight and, and it's, it's tough right now with, especially with inflation, things like that. What are you hearing out there? Yeah. You know, well, that's, that's the interesting thing, right? It, it It's kind of um, counterintuitive because attendance is skyrocketing compared to COVID obviously. Uh, but you know, be between inflation and everything else, the budgets are getting tighter. So what a lot of leadership is asking people to do, whether that's just their marketing director that handles events or a specific event marketer, is to kind of rework how they approach trade shows, right? Um, do we need the same footprint? Uh, what what goals are we actually accomplishing here? How many people are we speaking to? Are those conversations good quality? And then they're kind of basing the budget off that, right? So a lot of people are struggling to basically maintain the same budget and their leadership expecting them to do the same exact event, the same amount of people and the same results with less money. And it's just, it's impossible to do it. Um, and so how do you frame that to leadership in order to get that budget back, or at least just to have them understand how events fit into the life cycle of your marketing? So how do you how do you help guide them through this? How do you help them na navigate this uh, this minefield uh, to get back to leadership so they can actually get to that show and and set realistic realistic expectations? Well, so that so it's the tough part, right? Because you if you're a true partner, you really do want to help people out, and right as and as a vendor, it's uh, you, you kind of have to remove yourself from the 
the outcome a bit, even just as a salesperson, right? So we might make less money on this deal, but this is what's going to keep their event cycle alive, right? So it, it's examining different ways for them to make the same impact, but in different ways. Uh, and I know you've you've had people on that have discussed this. Uh, Julius Solaris has talked about satellite events and micro events a lot. And that's a really great example that we've kind of seen, right? Not necessarily with all of our clients, but just in general in the industry. I've seen companies kind of reduce their footprint at certain shows where they were, you know, they're the flagship sponsor at the show, right? And they've actually cut down their footprint because you can never really afford to fully remove yourself from some of these trade shows, right? Um, yeah. You know, you've walked the floor and you may just, you'll pass a, a company that you've seen year after year after year there without thinking twice about it. But the one year you go and they're not there, all of a sudden you you realize it 100%, right? So what do you do? So you reduce the footprint. You don't really need that big of a booth, right? And then maybe you have a smaller event uh, at offsite around that event. So I, you know, I was at um, an oncology show, the biggest oncology show on in the country, um, AAOS, and there was a, a company there that does $4 billion in revenue. They can easily afford to have the biggest boost that compete with the Novartis and you know all these monster boosts with these crazy LEDs and 3D visuals. Uh, but they had a, a pretty modest booth and then they rented out the ballroom at the Ritz Carlton, uh, which I know is not in everybody's budget, but <laughs> it saves them a lot. And they had a lot of their VIPs and people trying to partner with them for drug research at this event. And you know I went to both, right? I was in their booth there was decent engagement. It was kind of just a lot of people walking around and, and talking a little bit. When I went to their mixer or whatever you want to call it at the, at the Ritz Carlton, there was so many like passionate conversations about where drug research is going and where oncology research is going. Uh, and it, it was just, it felt a lot different than it did in the trade show. And you got to expect that because the trade show, you're having thousands of people walk in who might not be your client, your ideal client persona. But at this mixer, you know, you got to imagine ninety percent of the people, aside from me, who snuck in as a sales guy, are <laughs> are there for have a really good conversation and kind of further your business goals. I love the idea of these micro events, and and don't discount the power of networking. Uh, that is something that we we need to make sure we are not skipping those networking events or considering those as an exhibitor. Of how how do I do this better? How do I how do I create a space? that I could have one-on-one -on -one conversations, not only between the people from our company and, and the select audience, but having them network so that they're seeing you as bringing value to them. I love that idea. You know, you know, maybe it's not the Ritz, but maybe it's uh, somewhere else that you're doing that. And in fact, I, I the, one of my latest episodes, I did my 10 top tips for networking. So I'll, I'll drop a, drop a, a a link to that in the uh, the show notes below. So check on that. But uh, any other ideas for for these these types of smaller events or other ideas that you've been able to give to to exhibitors of other ways they could stretch their dollar? Yeah, you know, so it's just being intentional, especially when you when you reduce your footprint at a show. So you could even go as far as Listen, I've seen companies have 75 plus shows, right? And a lot of those are just portable pop-ups, right? But if you're spending five to $7,000 on a lot of those pop-ups and you're really not getting any ROI from them, right? Regardless of how you measure it, if you can sit there and say, we're really not getting the ROI, just pull out of those shows, right? Pull out of those shows and then maybe develop, devote all that budget to the big show where you actually are making an impact and you can actually prove measurable results to leadership, right? Um but if you have a smaller space and you want to be more intentional with it, really try and tell a story. You, you'd be amazed how many people I go up to at trade shows and I ask them, and granted, they might be busy and not want to talk to a sales guy, but I really am curious. What's your story here? What story are you trying to tell from a brand perspective? And a lot of people just don't know. You know, they'll, they'll throw out the buzzwords, you know, innovative and cutting edge and synergy and right. But like, what does that mean? You know, I, I can, I can walk through this booth and have absolutely no clue what you do. So, um, a good example of this small booth uh, wasn't overwhelmingly technical or, you know, um, it, it weren't LEDs everywhere kind of overstimulating you. Uh, but Warehouser, they're a lumber company. And I asked that question, what story are you trying to tell here? And she said, let me, let me ask you, what do you think? And I was like, well, it looks like these are your products and you're building kind of like a forest out of it and maybe sustainability. And she was like, that's exactly what we're doing. So they built trees like faux trees 
out of their raw material lumber. And then they had a green hanging sign as like a canopy with leaves on it. And it kind of just showed how their product fits into the life cycle of their distributors and where it's coming from and the whole story of Weyerhaeuser. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And that could not have been, you know, we're not talking like a million dollar budget here. That was simple, cheap, and very efficient. And I, I like that a lot. So find out what story you're trying to tell and then be intentional about how you use your booth to tell it. That is, that's an incredible tip right there. I love that. I love uh, storytelling. I love that people leave with more than just your, this is what we do, but they, they get a feeling almost that you're, you're, you're giving them the warm and fuzzies <laughs> or some sort of feeling when they leave your booth. So tell a story, but you know, most importantly is when you step back, what kind of story are you telling? What are what do people get a gut from this? And I would challenge that probably 90% of booths out there, they would, if they truly maybe brought bring in someone from the outside, look at your booth and say, shoot, I have no idea what, what story you're telling me. You're an accounting company. You are a software vendor. You are, yeah, you are this, you are that, but what story are you telling? Like you said, the sustainability or whatever it is uh, for that company, love that. And something else you said a little bit earlier, make sure that whatever you're trying to get out of these shows is measurable. I just had a conversation just this morning with, with someone and they were talking about being at a show and, and, that the the head of the company didn't care. They just wanted the branding. They just wanted the branding. And and yeah, there's something to be said about that. And there's something also to be said about if you pull out of a, sh a certain shows, it will be noticed. And uh, you you never want your competitors to say, "Hey, where's their company? Yeah, they must not be doing very well if they're not here this year." <laughs> you know, you don't want any of that. But if it's a small show and you're you're not getting anything out of it, and you're not you don't have a huge presence in that industry then yeah, use your resources where they make the most sense. So that really goes to your, your annual planning when you're looking at your show calendar for the year and saying, okay, maybe instead of doing 10 shows this year, we do five, but we're going to pour more resources into those and do it more strategically. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Any other uh, things that you're hearing right now from, from it, vendors, whether it's whether it's for, for budget reasons or, or anything else that is, is really capturing your attention right now <laughs> believe it or not budget is always the biggest pain point yeah. that i hear from um but no it's it's kind of just people well okay so hand in hand with budget right it's always it's creative so you know i i, I hate to break it to some people but if you work with a vendor depending on who your trade show partner is and all of a sudden your budget gets slashed by three hundred thousand dollars they probably don't want to work with you anymore right? Yeah. That, that's really what it is. It's how do we get these people out of the door as quick as possible? And so what happens is that creative pipeline all of a sudden gets shut off from their side, right? So now you find yourself as an event marketer coming up with all the ideas, right? Um, which, it, you know, listen, as, as somebody on the agency side, we do expect you to, to give some input into creative, right? Uh, it's your brand at the end of the day. But you shouldn't have to be paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to a vendor and then also supplying them with all the creative direction, right? So you you should be relying on them as a partner to kind of push your program forward like that. Uh, so it's just, you have to reevaluate your partners, right? And I'm not just saying that as a sales guy, like, hey, every three years you should go out to an RFP. I'm really not saying that. But to keep people on their toes and keep them honest, you really should ask yourself at the end of every trade show season, did we really get what we needed out of our partner? Like, was the creative there? Was the service there? Was the communication there, right? Was there transparency? These are the questions you have to ask. And some people I, I hear, listen, from I run the full gamut of, of pain points from people. I hear the company we work for is too small and they, you know, there was hidden fees and they, and we didn't really have any creative and the company we work for is too big. The creative is, is lacking and they just don't have time for us because they're too big. So, you really have to find that right partner for you. You know, um, you could easily outgrow an agency in the, in the event world, you know, you, you can scale. And while they're trying to scale that agency, they can kind of, the service can kind of fall apart. I hear that too. Um, but creative is such an important part of this and you need to work side by side with your partner to really tell that story, right? If, if they're not trying to help you tell that story, you need to reevaluate who your partners are. Critical, critical right there. And, and that, 
you know, don't panic with uh, if your budget is slashed, don't panic. Just evaluate. Take more time to do your due diligence. Are we using the right vendors? Like like you just said, Rich, are we maybe we can uh, rearrange our, our footprint? Maybe we, we rent less furniture and we just have everyone standing this time. Uh, but there's a lot of things that you could do creatively. And like the, the Weyerhaeuser uh, example you gave earlier, that is a fantastic way of doing more with less. How do you get more creative and be super creative on a budget? And sometimes the most memorable things, the things that make the most impact are those things that are not the big LED wall and not the uh, the celebrity that you hired to be, uh, you know, do an appearance at your booth. But it's something that's more creative that really ties into your brand. These are just uh, just outstanding uh, tips. Thank you so much. As we wrap up our, our conversation here today, wow, this really went fast. <laughs> but uh, as we wrap yeah. this wrap this up today, uh, what would be your your top takeaways for companies that are looking to go? Man, we just we've got to do something with our budget. Uh, I I would say, and I, I know this is almost becoming a buzzword, right? But um, foster that community, right? Like find your your loyalists and foster that community. Um, it's very hard to maintain a community throughout the year in between these events, but it, it's so necessary in 2024, right? And I don't know, and going forward, there's a bunch of reports out there, right? People feel as lonely now as they ever have, right? Which is so crazy because we're so connected, well, yeah. quote unquote, connected with social media and everything, but community is super important. There's no better example of that than the event community. And like you said earlier in the, in the, on this recording, like, uh, the people in this industry are so warm and, and welcome and open to giving you insights and, and help anywhere you need it. So find a way to build that community, strengthen it with micro events, kind of drill it home at the bigger events, you know, like really focus on the people you're catering to. And don't worry if you're excluding some people, right? That's the whole thing. Your community is your people. So if you're, if you're trying to get everybody in it, it's for nobody. <laughs> That's awesome. What a great way to close that. Remember that you know, know your target, know your audience, and connect with them, and bring them together too. That's a that's a great way to you know, build that community, and you you create this halo brand that uh, that so many brands enjoy, but a lot of smaller brands just haven't figured that out yet. But there's ways to do it now with technology, social media, and all that good stuff. Thanks so much, Rich, for for coming on and for sharing. What's the best way for people they want to reach out and connect with you? What's the best way for them to do that? My LinkedIn, probably. I mean, I give my number. My number is everywhere. I'm a sales guy, right? So, but no, LinkedIn is the best way. Even if, uh, listen, I'm not trying to sell every day of the week. If you get, if you want to talk about events, trade shows, travel, I'm, I'm always up. I got into this business for relationships. So that's my whole thing. Fantastic. I'll drop the link to his LinkedIn and he is worth following. He's got really over 5,000 connections and followers. Uh, and there's a reason for that. He puts out fantastic content and uh, he's just a, a wealth of knowledge, even though, like you said, you, you you feel like you've been doing this for a while, a short period of time, but you have accelerated and just done phenomenally well. Uh, and you have, you pick up your sponge in the industry. So I really appreciate that. Appreciate you uh, bringing out the sponge today for, for our listeners yeah. here and, and sharing some of that, uh, some of that insight. So thanks, thanks so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Outstanding. Everyone reach out to Rich and continue to binge here at Trade Show University where you can help you keep getting more leads and do more with less. And we'll see you next time.